can do is it. Okay. Part of the underground of, uh, of Palman. <laughs> so we are, yeah, yeah, actually we are, we are completely underground to the platform. Actually, the, the platform is just on top of us. Huh. So when you when you see where this big white part where the gate is, where the telescopes are, it's just on top of us. And then what we do basically is that the light is coming from one of these openings. So now we, we close them when we don't use them, but this is the one going. They all have basically when we use them, we just open the uh, this cover, and then it comes like this one. This is the one, that's where the light from UT3 is coming. For example. So it's the UT ones are open because we are operating with the UTs currently with the... So applied. here in, here out? Well, we are, you have two opening. We uh, The light is coming here actually, uh -huh. but we have two. Uh, for the moment it's not used for the UTs, but it's used with the 80s. Uh, for an instrument that I will show you later, which is called Prima, which is uh, used to do astro very precise astrometry. And in that case, we are basically one, each telescope is looking at two stars at the same time. And one is coming here and the other star is coming here. That's why we have two openings. Mm -hmm. So then when the light comes, actually it comes to uh, this mirror, which is already the number 12 in the pass. And then it goes to, to what we call the delay lines. So these are the delay lines. So we have six. There are four on this side and two on the other side. And the idea of this is to, uh, well, is to make the, the equalization of the OPD at the uh, year, the goal is to, to reach the micron level. For the 80s, you enter on this side, on the up part, when you come from the other side, and you exit on the other side there. And basically what the light is doing is going to, so to the big mirror at the end, comes back to this one, and then it's focused at the end, in the center of the big one, and then and again and exit. I have something unclear, so do you think all uh, say all those mirrors inside are flat, or you no, focus no, no. it down? It's, uh, they are well. The combination of the first, the big one, and this one are used to focus here in the focus center. It yeah, it's, it's focused okay. and then it comes back. Okay, just a cat's eye position. Yeah, you mean okay. And uh, actually, the last mirror is uh, is a very special one. It's actually uh, it's, it's mounted on a piezoelectric system actuator to compensate. Mm -hmm in real time for small, uh, for all the, uh, the variation of the uh, of OPD. And it, it's also actually, it's a membrane and we, uh, we inflate it with pressure on the back. And the idea of that is pro probably because, the, uh, it's because the, when we move the delay line, we are basically changing the optical setup of the VLTI. So basically, this mirror is used to, uh, to always reimage the pupil at the same position in the center of the tunnel. So, Wherever the delay line is, the pupil stays at the same position. And that's the idea of this uh, variable curvature mirror. Uh, if you look below, you have actually this big part, which is a magnet. And uh, we move it by actually putting current on this actuator. So that's, there are two levels of actuation. So this is what we call more or less the coarse actuation. So it's basically it's just a electro yeah, it's electromagnet. So we are pushing, putting the current in one direction or the other to push or or pull the, the carriage, mm -hmm. and we measure its position accurately through this uh, ruler bil below the, uh, here you see it's just this uh, plastic part, is basically, uh, here we have uh, optical oh. measurement so of like the position, the it's, 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 a, it's a ruler, yeah. Some color, it's an encoder, encoder, yeah. encoder. Optical, enco optical encoder. But then we have a metrology that you can see here, mm -hmm. which is actually coming from the center of the tunnel, and following the same path, it's entering the system and exiting here on the top and coming back. And with this, we control the position of the, of the carriage to the, a few nanometers. Is that laser pulse? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, like, it's a laser metrology. Yes.
When the light then go exit the delay line, it goes to the center of the tunnel. So I can show you. So actually, this is the metrology system. It's very simple. It's actually basically it's a mirror. It's a, well, I guess it's if we it's probably Max Zender configuration for an interferometer. Here we just split the light in two. One part goes to the delay line, and the other part goes up to uh, to this system. So this part is the reference, mm -hmm. and the part that goes to the delay line is used to for the measurement. And basically, we just here we recombine the two, and the signal is injected in a photodiode, and then there is fiber going down to the to the receiver. When the light actually comes back from the from the delay line, it goes to this mirror. That's number uh, number 16 already, and. Each, each of, the, of these eight mirrors is actually uh, attached to one delay line. So this is the one for delay line one, for example. And it can basically, uh, it's moved, it can be moved to any position to send the beams to any of the 16 inputs that we have for the, for the lab. So it's one more level of uh, possible uh, configuration and, uh, for the VLTI. So now you have the 60 lane line working. Yes. So this is under vacuum, I guess. So it's under vacuum because, well, the, the, uh, the reason for that is basically the main delay line, uh, they are compensating the OPD between two telescopes. They are mainly compensating something that's happening in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So it's, we, have, we, leave, we, leave, we leave them under normal air. But this difference between the two stars is actually something that's happening in, uh, in vacuum, in space. Basically, all the three first part is what we call the switchyard. And basically, any of these six mirrors have four positions, depending if we're observing with the 80s, with the UTs, with the dual feed, 80s, dual feed UTs, and uh, in that in, And this, the reason for that is that I was saying, when we are using the 80s, the beam inside the tunnel is 1.8 cm, and the UTs is 8 cm. Mm -hmm. So basically, when we arrive then at the instrument, we need to have all the uh, optical uh, system well, to be the same whatever the configuration we are using. So if we use the 80s, basically the light goes directly from the tunnel to the instrument. So uh, the, the mirrors are rotated by 90 degrees. Actually now they are in the position with for the UTs because we are using them at night. And in that case they go to this part, which is just a beam compressor. So they enter into a combination of three mirrors of axis parabola and flat mirror here. And basically just by the, the ratio of the focal lengths, we reduce the beam from 8 cm to 1.8 right after. And that's and there is one per, per possible. So after that. Uh, then when we come to the first instrument actually, and each instrument has actually what we call the feeding optics. So these are the one for BD, which is an instrument behind you, which is actually the first, uh, the first instrument that has been offered with the, with the VLTI. So here, currently, the, the, the optics are uh, out of the beam. And when we use MIDI, we rotate them, and then they come here and send the light toward, the, toward MIDI. And, these are actually for and then they go almost directly to the detector. There are just a few uh, extra mirrors which are used, actually, uh, just to adjust the internal OPD of uh, MIDI compared to the global OPD of the VLTI. So these small rooftop mirrors, they, they can be moved over a few centimeters to adjust uh, the OPD, but they are just moved once. They are not moved during observation. They are. So it's the most uh, recent installation at the VLTI. And actually, it's not, it doesn't belong to us. When, when I say us, it's uh, ISO. It's the first instrument that allowed us to combine four telescopes at the same time. So that's why you see everything is duplicated in four. So the light comes from the, uh, any of the four telescopes. It comes actually uh, first, same thing that they are feeding optics, which is this long arm at the beginning, which is on translation stage. Mm -hmm. So here they are off, of course, because we don't use Pioneer. But when we use them, they would just move them, move the dichroics. So you just move the dichroic here to this position, and then you take, for the moment, that we take the edge band. Okay. So to 1.4 to 1.8 microns. Then when we take the light, it goes to this first mirror, which is actually do, used to do the OPD modulation, mm -hmm. so that we can 
record the complete the fringes. You take and you see the complete packet of fringes mm. for each of the for each of the baseline. Well, it's not like MIDI or Amber. Yeah. Exactly, you, you you really see the fringes on the detector. Yeah. Uh, here, you have to modulate the OPD. So you see the fringes over well, time. You see the, exactly. It's yeah. Pioneer. It's a temporal modulation. Yeah. Where Amber, it's a spatial modulation of yeah. the of the uh, of the fringes. Which is a very fast tip tilt compensa compensation mm -hmm. to basically uh, because we have correctors of tip tilt or AO system at the telescope, but still because of the, for example, if you if you take UT4. Before we come here, there are still it's 200 meters of propagation inside the air, so there are still many possibilities for the uh, for perturbation, and that's why we use these uh, mirrors in combination to a tip tilt detector, which is a term we show you later, and we basically have it's a very fast actuation of tip tilt to compensate for everything that we haven't corrected before. Then it goes through these small plates, which are actually birefringent. Uh, Material and these are used to compensate for the uh, differential OPD between the two polarizations. The four fibers, yes, and then the fibers get connected to the to the to combiner to the yeah, to the, the chip. Yeah, and, the, and then on the tip you merge the fibers. Yes. Together. Well, that is all the circuitry inside, and then uh, to make six combinations. Yeah, six combinations, two by two. And then those combinations are imaged into the detector. Yeah. So the detector is inside the cluster. Yeah. The but the, there are two lenses in front which are just used to image the output of the combiner to the detector. So the chip is just doing the detours to match the means. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the instrument, it's doing the, the combination, the, re, the real interferometric combination yeah. is done there. So instead of merging right in front of the detector like need it, you do it before yeah. inside the chip. And then you just record it. And it's much better. So if we uh, can try to go. So this is finito, actually, this half. These are only uh, configuration optics. Infinito is what we call the fringe tracker. So the fringe tracker is the uh, equivalent of uh, adaptive optics for interferometry. Because I'd say, I mean, uh, well, you probably know that uh, in any AO system, you can't measure what we call the piston, which is basically the global phase over your pupil. But if, as if for, well, for any instrument on the, on the normal telescope, you don't care for the global phase. Of course, on the interferometry, each movement of the phase is killing the, the, uh, the interferometer because it's moving the OPD. So what, uh, what Finito is doing, it's working actually with three telescopes. And it's measuring in real time and very fast all this movement of OPD due to the atmosphere, the tunnel and everything. And sending a real time correction to signal to the delay line. Exactly the same one on the other side of the table. For the other so one, one, one is for one star, the other one for the other star. You have one beam coming on our side and the other one on the other side. So it goes to uh, this first mirror, which is just used to bend. It's just a flat mirror. Then it goes to the small tip tilt. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same idea as Pioneer. Actually, Finito has the same one. Oh, sorry. Finito has the same one, Pioneer. All the instruments, actually, Pioneer, Finito, Amber, and Prima are using fibers. And as for that, we need to be, uh, to yeah. inject correctly the light, we need to be very stable in terms of tip tilt. So they have all the same correctors these small tip tilt correctors, which is a, a mirror glued on a tip tilt. If you, if you take the further beam, it goes to this, uh, what we call K prism. Mm -hmm. It's basically this is used to, uh, to do a, a phase shift of pi, 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 two, pi, I think, between one polarization and the other for one beam. Using the polarization, so you d first do uh, here a pi, pi phase shift, so you already have two points. If you separate, because it separate, we separate the polarization after, so you have already two. And then, uh, I think it's in here, you have a pi over two applied to both of the polarization, and then you, can, you get the two other points. So this works exactly the same way that the 4D phase sh shifting interferometers, in which they separate the polarizations. And then you go to this, uh, to this small mirror, well, the small part, small mirror here, okay. one for each beam, then it cross the the part in the center of the cube is, a com is the combiner. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the other mirror on the other side and cross the table. And you, as you can see, there is one extra system. In, in, the, in the mirrors there, you, have a small, you can see a small hole in the center. Yes. And from there, we inject actually a metrology, mm -hmm. which actually goes all the way to the telescope and come back. During and observation? During observation in constant time. With a laser? Basically. With a laser, yeah. So it's, it's, an, it's an infrared laser, yeah, it's an interferometer. Yeah. And this is to know exactly, uh, because we, if we want to reach the time hexagon uh, accuracy, 
we know we need to know exactly what is the what is the optical path between here and the telescope. Ah, because you're using that information for the angle on the yeah. sky, so you're calibrating. Yeah, that calibrating way. to remove everything that's happening here and have only what's happening uh, up there. So this actually, uh, this part is what we call iris. It's actually a tip tilt. It's a camera which uh, which we are using for the uh, for the real time correction of the of the tip tilt. So basically, we can send up to four beams, four telescope beams at the same time. Then we just image on the detector and we measure the, mo the position, the movement of the centroid of the image. Okay. And then we send, that's actually, this instrument, this uh, part is sending the real-time correction to the small tip tilt mirrors that I showed you on Prima, Pioneer. So if we go to the last one, maybe I can. Uh, so Amber is working, uh, hey, you know it's very well, you spend a lot of time aligning it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's an instrument that's capable of combining up to three beams, three telescope beams, and it's working in three bands at the same time, up to three bands at the same time, J, H, and K. It's because there are a lot of uh, alignment and calibration parts inside. This is just an artificial source for the internal calibration of the instrument. So it's simulating three beams to be able to do the recombination and uh, uh, it's for the alignment. So it's just when we do, uh, we do some tests and we, uh, we check the alignment. What this system is doing is that basically the two extreme ones is swapping them for the instrument and then if you do a measurement in this, in this configuration and then in this configuration and you do or I don't remember if the subtraction or the addition of the two then you remove almost all the instrumental effect and this is used to uh, increase the precision of, uh, of the measurement. You have three three times exactly the same thing in three, uh, in three parts. Okay. If, I, if I take this one which is the one that for, the, for H you start with the acroix, which is taking the uh, the edge part of the of the wavelength range. It's just basically sim simply sending to an off-axis parabola, injecting inside the fiber. So the idea of the fiber is what uh, Eduardo was saying is to do special filtering. So it's basically to remove all the remaining uh, defect of the wavefront. The the fiber actually cross the table, goes to the other side, and then we go back to uh, free uh, free propagation. So all this part is just for the special filtering, basically. And then we go again to a dichroic, which allows to combine again the J, well, J, H, and K together. And then they cross again completely the table and they go to the detector. And then to, do the, to measure the photometry in real time, one per beam, and then you have in the center the part which is the fringes. And then, yeah, it's just, uh, you send the light of all three beams together at the same place. On one line, actually, there is an, what we call an anamorphosis optics which is basically not m making one, one image in one point, but one line. And then you disperse to have the, uh, the wavelength information in one direction of the detector. So one direction is the information of the fringes on the detector, and the other direction is the spectral, uh, spectral information.